Well, Tam Sanka joins me in the studio now. So, Tam, where next? What are the options for Burundi? Uh, Burundi only has one option, and that is to have uh, free, fair, and credible elections. Uh, if that doesn't happen, the chaos is likely to become worse, and uh, it sits in the region where this should not be allowed to happen. And I think that is what the African Union are emphasizing, that it is very important for, for Burundi to have uh, credible elections. Well, there's three sets, local and parliamentary elections, they've already been delayed, but there's no sign of this presidential election being delayed on what, June the 26th. Opposition leader Agathon Rouast is suggesting parliament must be in place before this presidential term uh, actually comes to an end in August. So w what's going to happen in this vacuum? Well, the, the Arusha Accord or the constitution that they have is a negotiated uh, constitution because of the civil war. Uh, many believe that up to about 300,000 people lost their lives and so many were displaced. So to me, whatever Burundi does, uh, the timetables and all those things might change. The AU or even the internal structures might change the, 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 the timetable of the elections to make sure that the conditions on the ground are peaceful enough for people to go and express their democratic will. Uh, democratic will being exercised hopefully in like you say fair elections but the whole region is an issue it's, it's a kind of not so much a conflict area but it's certainly an unhappy one if we have a look at this uh, graphic you'll notice that where Burundi is located you've got Tanzania to the east where a lot of Burundians have been fleeing in order to escape uh, what's been going on in Burundi but look at the uh, the neighbours, South Sudan, Uganda, Rwanda, DRC and Central African Republic, a lot of issues going on in those neighbouring countries. Uh, these, these are, this is a volatile uh, region and um, as, you, as you can see, the, the, the area, uh, most of those countries are already having conflict. Um, but most people don't realise that uh, in 1993 when, when uh, Burundi, well, after a long time after independence, decided uh, to go for, for democratic elections, uh, the president who was elected then and Adai was assassinated. And then in 1994, we, we know that uh, the, the next uh, president that came, Antaria uh, Mina, was, was also uh, assassinated uh, together with uh, Habi Arimana from uh, from from Rwanda, and that was the start of uh, of the, the 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 genocide in Rwanda. But because that genocide was going on, people didn't realize outside the region that Burundi was facing similar and very tough uh, situations. And of course, their their civil war continued against. Uh, I mean, it was mainly between the Tutsi um, the Tutsi dominated army and uh, and the Hutu uh, who were who are still the, the majority from an ethnic point of view. And the president and the leader of the opposition now were in the same camp mm. uh, fighting against the Tutsis. But let's have a look at something that needs to be talked about because we've got a, a kind of a, a fairly recent comparison to what's going on in Burundi. Ankur Nziza, like you mentioned in your report, he says that he's really only been voted in once because he was appointed on his first term. He doesn't look like he's going to give in. So do you think we could see a repeat of what happened in Burkina Faso when we had Blaise Campayor trying to extend his term in office and look what happened there? Uh, it, it is highly unlikely that uh, what happened in Burkina Faso um, uh, would, would, uh, can happen in, in, in Burundi now because the army uh, general and the, the core of the army in Burundi appear to be behind the president. Mm. You will remember um, a few weeks ago when there was that attempted coup, the army general is the one who came in, the chief of staff, and said, no, that is is not going to happen and that is how uh, President Kuruziza was able to come back and continue uh, it, as, as president at least for now. What is likely to happen though is well the the the, the African Union in special the regional leaders might ask him to make that choice. Do, does he stay and uh, risk that there will be further conflict beyond the elections or he steps aside. Could he could have an uprising on his hands from all of his people whether it's uh, Hutus or Tutsis. 
Um, I, I don't think the ethnic uh, element will happen as long as there is no escalation. Yeah, but but if there is any any civil strife that that becomes an armed struggle, I see that uh, that is going to descend into the the ethnic um, areas that that were there before. Briefly, Ruasa is calling for foreign help. What do you think can be done? Is it sort of direct action, or is it just to assist what should be free and fair elections? It's so difficult to see because um, France, Belgium, the countries that had a foothold in those kind of areas, former colonial masters, do not want to be seen in that area again because of their experience in Rwanda. Uh, but uh, the West do also don't want to interfere because of what happened in Kenya, uh, where they were seen to be opposing President Uhuru, uh, and then he won the elections. So it's, it's a delicate situation, but I think the African Union and the regional leaders and the leadership in Burundi will find a solution to this crisis. Tam, always great to get your analysis on these things. Tam Sankashi, thank you very much.